Hello, I'm Krishna Ramos, reporter for Inquirer.net. And I am Neil Arun Mercado, and this is The Inside Look. In today's episode, we have Senator Risa Honteveros, the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality. Senator, thank you for joining us. How are you both? I'm okay. Um, all things considered, Christian. Salamat. <laughs> Salamat din sa pag And I hope you're well also and healthy. Thank you for giving us a bit of your time po. Diretso na po tayo, Senator. Um, your committee has been uh, conducting several hearings on many issues, most notably itong very controversial Pastilla scheme. Can you give us any updates on this? Um, is there anything that authorities should look into um, aside dun sa unang na-uncover ng committee nyo po? Yes, Christia. Um, the next big thing ay talaga sa trafficked women. So, yung susunod na priority legislation namin ay magpasok ng amendment sa ating anti-trafficking uh, in-persons bill. Um, kasi nga, nahanap ng mga Bureau of Immigration officials na yung previously named the masterminds dun sa Pastilla scam, may links din sila sa outbound naman na trafficking of Filipino women, particularly sa Syria. So dahil dito, uh, necessary lang talaga na palakasin natin yung ating anti-trafficking uh, in-persons bill, kasalukuyan SB uh, 1929, lalo na sa gitna nitong pandemya, no? kung kailan yung mga unscrupulous persons ginagamit pa itong economic crisis para biktimahin uh, yung mas maraming tao sa trafficking. Women especially, and also we found out, including uh, children. Doon nga, sa huling pagdinig namin sa minors traffic to Syria, uh, nalaman namin na pati yung mga passports nila, pinafabricate, o, o para itago yung fact na menor de edad sila. At yun yung parang garantya na may seamless outbound exit sila uh, sa mga airport gates natin. And uh, apparently, this pastilias scam isn't found only at the airports, but several steps behind. Nagsisimula yung trafficking uh, dun sa pagproproseso nga ng mga doctored passports para nga itago yung uh, totoong edad nila. Tapos uh, sa forging din ng birth registration documents, imagine. So, uh, isasama namin yung mga natutunan namin ito sa previous hearing dun sa pag-amienda naman ng Senate Bill uh, 1929. Isa pala, Christian, sa mga importante bagong features dyan sa Senate Bill 1929 ay yung pagkilala dun sa paggamit ng online at sa digital platforms para sa trafficking. At dahil dun, the bill even now already imposes penalties sa mga private facilities. So, internet service providers, pati yung mga financial intermediaries, uh, transport services, no? pati yung kanilang online applications. Lahat nito na alam nila, knowingly, ginagamit yung facilities nila, digital man or physical, for the purposes of trafficking. Some of our um, important particular findings uh, about the Baklas Passport uh, Operation, for example, nung hiri nga sinabi ni na umayma, Alen, uh, Len, at, at, at Alia, Alia, na yung passports nila finabricate para nga itago yung fact na underage sila. So, yun nga, sinisiguro yung seamless outbound uh, transactions nila sa airport gates. Opo, it seems na sobrang creative po ng mga ginagawa nitong airing uh, BA officers. Um, yung whistleblower niyo po na si Mr. Allison Chong, Meron pa po ba siyang binabanggit na iba pang ways aside from outbound and inbound pastillas within the Bureau of Immigration to traffic these women out of the country? Well, hindi talaga nag-disappoint si Alex Chong, pati si Dale Ignacio, yung isa pa naming pastilla scam whistleblower na para tulungan kami i-uncover parang isang, parang ano eh, parang, uh, ang tawag nito, hindi bawang, parang, oh, ano ba yun? Yeah, parang yung onion na uh, ang ang sakit eh kaya ipipil yung bawat layer at talagang uh, nakakaiyak. So mga ayaw nga sila nung sinabi ko na hindi lang pala COVID-19 nagmumutate pati itong pastillas scam. And naalala ko, uh, Miss Christian, nung nakaraang hearing, 
nung tinatunong namin yung mga detalye ng trafficking to Syria. In fact, nabanggit nila na this trafficking is also perpetrated to other countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, sa Middle East din, uh, nabanggit nga din yung Saudi Arabia, for example. Sa ibang mga bansa dito sa Asia, well, ngayon pa lang, uh, sabi na ng ilan sa mga babae at batang babaeng naging biktima ng trafficking na nag-stop over sila sa Kuala Lumpur. So, baka magandang tignan ng ating DFA yung pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga foreign affairs counterparts nila sa Malaysia. And then, pinanggit din ni na Alex yung ibang mga bansa pa sa Europe, mm-hmm. no, sa EU. So, um, masakit na realidad na sa sobrang creativity ng mga tiwali sa loob ng BI para kumita ng pera sa sarili nila, eh talagang uh, pinadadala nila yung mga kabaro natin sa slavery uh, at sa uh, possibly sa, sa slaughter din. No? Kung, kung sa mga bansa na talagang walang-wala silang legal uh, identity, let alone protection. Mm-hmm. When will you um, dish out yung committee report niyo po dito? Or will you hold more hearings to look into yung mga links nga po sa ibang bansa? Kasi I interviewed um, Charge AD Affairs, um, Vida Survivor Sosa before, and she said na um, parang it's a larger system in itself na merong mga links with other immigration officers outside of the country. Would you consider looking into that po? Or handa na po kayong maglabas ng committee report? Ngayon pa lang, eh, medyo handa na kaming maglabas ng committee report with all the rich and terrible findings since last year at yung aming mga uh, rekomendasyon, particular dito sa uh, Pastilla Scam in all its terms possible dun sa anti-trafficking uh, in persons bill. Mag-uusap na lang kami ulit sa komite kung kailangan pa ba ng uh, isa pang hearing uh, but otherwise, uh, jump pack na itong committee report na ito. And I hope na yung mga executive agencies bukod sa DFA, uh, very notably yung NBI at pati yung DOJ, uh, even the constitutional body of the ombudsman na kumbaga inaccompany na yung proseso namin in the past many months by conducting their own further investigations, uh, case preparation, and actual filing of these cases. I really hope that they will make the most uh, ng aming uh, committee report. I'm confident that they will. Uh, alang-alang, hindi lang sa pagbalik sa isang importanteng ahensya tulad ng BI uh, plus yung DFA offices nga dun sa original na mandato nila. But especially, you know, um, uh, in, in the last analysis, especially para protektahan yung ating mga kababaihan at bata. Mm-hmm. Now, going from one important topic to another, mm-hmm. itong, I'm just gonna shift medyo malayo dun sa mm-hmm. itong COVID protocols po. And yes. last night, about sa threat ni President Duterte that yung mga, those who are refusing to get vaccinated may be arrested. Do you think this is an effective you know, um, measure for him to to say? Kasi usually, we know the president usually issues off the cuff, um, you know, statements like this. But do you think this is the right thing to do and say amid this situation we are in right now? Off the cuff man, pero mula sa simula ng pandemyang ito, uh, unfortunately, ganito uh, kakitid, no? Yung uh, menu from which uh, naglalabas si presidente ng mga hindi lang salita pero mga polisiya at programa hindi banta hindi aresto uh, ang magfa-flatten ng curve ng COVID-19 dito sa Pilipinas lalo na dito sa bagong uh, Delta variant mula sa simula sinasabi ko na public health crisis ito kaya public health approach ang epektibo. So, hindi mo babantaan, hindi mo aarestohin yung mga kababayan natin na may vaccine hesitancy. Kundi, gawin natin ang lahat ng tamang hakbang para precisely itaas yung vaccine confidence nila. So, simula na dun sa malawak at sa katamang information campaign ng DOH para mabuo yung kumpiyansa ng bawat Pilipino na kung magdedesisyon siya uh, na magpabakuna, Kampante siya na ito talaga yung proteksyon, lalo na nga dito sa bagong uh, Delta variant. Siguruhin na uh, yung mga dating delays, yung mga dating dropping the ball, like 
hindi pagsara ng borders in timely fashion, pagkailangan, yung pag-accelerate o pag-facilitate ng clearances para sa vaccine uh, procurement, uh, at yung mabilis at maramihang uh, pagpapapasok ng mga vaccines dito, hindi na dapat maulit yan, lalo na ngayon in the face of the Delta variant. So, maglikha tayo ng conducive environment para nga mas marami Uh, majority of us Filipinos, yung 70% na sinasabing kailangan para sa herd immunity ay makapagpabakuna talaga. Including everything like the cold chain storage, proper and timely delivery sa mga LGUs natin na dumadami ang nagpapakita ng gilas at dedikasyon para protektahan yung kalusugan ng kanilang mga uh, constituents. Yung pag-hire ng sapat na dami ng bilang ng mga vaccinators Uh, pagpaparami ng mga araw ng vaccination, time slots, um, lanes or queues para maka-observe pa rin ng uh, physical distancing at ibang protocols habang nagpapabakuna. Ito at napakarami at klaro sa atin higit isang taon na ang kailangan para mas marami ay magpabakuna. Hindi ito na namang mga banta ng pag-aresto ni Presidente. Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of yung protocols naman po on face shields, um, there's been a lot of confusion about that kasi nung una po, um, it was Senator S.P. Soto who said na mm-hmm. even the President agreed na for hospital use lang ito but President Duterte later on clarified na kumbaga hindi po yon with formality niya sinabi. So mm-hmm. ngayon, meron na pong uh, minandate na po ni President Duterte na indoors and outdoors po. Pero yung confusion about this simple thing na face shields, what does this say about the pandemic response of the government more than a year in into the pandemic? Po? So, ibig sabihin kung confusion ang nakikreate na epekto, siguro confused din. Hindi lang yung comms, pati yung policies. Uh, tayo na lang nga yung bansa or isa sa kakaunting bansa na ginagamit ang face shield bilang um, COVID-19 protocol. Ang alam natin from WHO at yung simula sa DOH, basta kumbaga ang Biblia natin ng COVID-19 protocols ay mask wearing, physical distancing, at saka hand cleaning. Siyempre sa mga closed, uh, air-conditioned, high uh, viral load settings tulad ng mga ospital, talagang ginagamit at kinakailangan ng ating mga healthcare workers, pati face shield para sa dagdag na protection Pero yung use niya by the general public in public spaces, eto nga nakakalitong uh, flip-flopping uh, on the policy. So again, another of the small but still important areas na government has to get its act together in terms of ano nga ba once and for all ang health policy sa ngayon at klaruhin ang komunikasyon diyan kasi ang komunikasyon dapat nagkaklaro hindi naglilito no oh and one more thing uh, miss christia about um, the vaccine confidence pala itong paggamit ng incentives well of course yung paggamit ng incentives ng uh, raffle prizes din hindi naman masama yan pero um, ibig sabihin yun na nga mas galingan pa ng ating mga health authorities yung pagpapataas ng tiwala uh, sa bakuna para the the incentive comes from within na uh, within na uh, each citizen dahil talagang isa sa mga life saving steps ay itong vaccination di tulad ng face shields Apo, i have a few, uh, i have a question uh, senator about the uh, elections next year oh. so we all know this is one of the uh, isa sa mga may inat na topics Right now, uh, we just had an interview with uh, Senator Kiko this morning. Mm-hmm. He said, he underscored, he basically stressed the importance of the opposition, uh, yes. the opposition uniting. What What's your take on that, Sen- uh, Senator Lisa? Well, I think uh, sa opposition, gusto talaga naming maging bahagi ng isang proseso tapos isang konkretong outcome where we can achieve a broader unity. At unity, of course, uh, at its core sa values, pero dagdag sa unity on values, uh, in terms of being forward-looking for the benefit mm-hmm. of the people. Oo. So yung kumbaga, new and better normal ay hindi lang post-pandemic, post-recession, pero post itong napaka-challenging na mga taon para sa ating tinatawag na contested democracy and mm-hmm. really moving forward no? um, through a process of 
uh, transitional justice and healing and reconciliation, mm-hmm. repairing damage uh, sa ating lipunan, and really, you know, recapturing yung uh, pangarap at saka yung uh, momentum and trajectory mm-hmm. natin uh, for something different and something better for for our country. So, sa ngayon, mm-hmm. syempre, dahil nasa maagang yugto pa, napaka-fluid, ang daming uh, talks uh, ongoing tungkol sa mga pagtutulungan o maging mga mm-hmm. alyansa. Uh, so, but um, even though there are days na hindi ako, hindi pa ako uh, optimistic, may mga ilang sandali na magiging pessimistic ako, pero mm-hmm. laging puno ako ng pag-asa and this is definitely one of those times as well for to choose to hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sa inyong kaalaman, Senator Risa, are there conversations? Kasi sabi ni Senator Kiko kanina, uh, the Liberal Party is having is trying to to reach out dito sa ilang mga uh, like Senator Lacson, Senator mm-hmm. Villanueva, even Mayor Isko Moreno. Sa inyong pagkakaalam, uh, Senator are there may bang gintong uh, conversations about possibly a coalition forming basically well uh, of course i can confirm what uh, senki mm-hmm. mentioned uh, that is to be not just expected pero desired na lahat ng mga uh, partido mga politiko mga aktivista mm-hmm. rin ay in the run up to every regular election na mag-uusap-usap dapat lang uh, kaming lahat to achieve that unity of uh, values and uh, uh, mm-hmm. desired benefits for mm-hmm. the people. So, ganun din. Uh, the talks have been, uh, I believe some talks have been going on. Uh, I've, I've initiated some of them since after the midterm elections about the idea, ideas that are being talked about now, whether alliances or I would call uh, what I would call a united front and um, itong uh, proseso ng isang bayan was another uh, is another public initiative mm. more recently launched so hopeful ako na magsasanib-sanib yang lahat no? the more uh, one-on-one or multilateral conversation since a few years ago itong bagong uh, proseso na nilunsad mm. I'm sure more will crop up uh, in the coming months. Ang importante hmm. sana to achieve some kind of synergy para merong critical mass uh, at uh, fighting chance to deliver something for our people. Hmm. Senator, you mentioned Isambayan and um, hmm. I know you're with Akbayan. Um, yes. Will you be running for higher office or re-election po yung inyong NI sa 2022? Well, I hope to run for re-election to the Senate. Pero, yes. opo, pero yung isang bayan po ba have they approached you to be part of the coalition po? Well, Akbayan, my party is participating in the uh-huh. isang bayan process. Uh-huh. Opo. And uh, sa pagkaalam ko, um, sa ngayon nakatutok sila sa pagpili ng kanilang presidential and vice presidential. So, uh, I suppose pag nabuo na nila iyon, uh, sometime next month, then they will get around to uh, considering yung kanilang mga senatorial balls. Are you also one of those who are hoping na si Vice President Robredo ang maging standard there ng, ng buong opposition? Are you also one of those na gusto po yung, well, yung tumakbo? Well, dahil nasa opposition ako, syempre siya yung almost naturally will come to mind when thinking mm-hmm. about a standard bearer. And then at the same time, and I believe she expressed some thoughts about this, mm-hmm. tingin ko dapat yung mabuong slate ay uh, hindi lang kaming opposition, full stop, pero opposition plus plus. Mm-hmm. Kaya broader unities, the, be- the broader the unities, the better. Uh, hindi lang kami sa opposition, pero mas maraming grupo at individual na mga Pilipino who basically in common want something different and something better. Uh, as the administration post-2022. So, sa ganung batayan palagay ko, um, each of us can remain faithful sa aming prinsipyo. At the same time, maghanap kami ng kumbaga, common ground no? for possible 
uh, cooperation on that common uh, national political project. Mm-hmm. Senator Risa, I want to talk about the administration side. Naman. We talked mm-hmm. about the opposition. I want to talk about the administration side. Mm-hmm. One of the more prominent um, tandems that is being talked about right now is a possible Duterte-Duterte tandem. What's your take on this? And because some people have um, said that this reeks of political dynasty, that another Duterte, will be, the, the power of the president will be passed to another Duterte. They, they are saying that it's political dynasty. Some are saying that do not make the Philippines, the entire Philippines, Davao City. Because we know that these things happen in the local sphere, that uh, mm-hmm. political dynasties and so on. But it it never even Senate President Soto, when we talked to them, he, he to him he said that it hasn't happened in the national scheme. Um, mm-hmm. What's your take on that? Well, uh, yung anti-political dynasty law, matagal ng utos mm-hmm. ng constitution yan since we ratified. Mm-hmm that basic law of the land pero napakaraming kongresong dumaan hindi pa rin naipasayan except mm-hmm. for an anti-dynasty provision in the SK law. So sana mm-hmm. ma-inspire naman tayo sa ating mga kabataan who will be uh, aside from the majority number of uh, first-time voters and voters overall in 2022 eh sila yung huhubog at magmamana nung, nung ating bansa. I think we should... Um, uh, strive, insist on remaining faithful to that anti-dynasty spirit. Hindi pa man siya na-realize sa isang buong batas, pero oo, wag na natin ulitin yung uh, ginawa nilang template uh, sa Davao City. There will be time for Davaoenos themselves to assess uh, ano yung naging uh, impact non sa kanilang minamahal na siyudad. But for our country at large, uh, palagay ko uh, kaya natin at dapat tayong maging mas expansive sa ating pananaw how mm-hmm. yung patuloy na pag-develop uh, ng ating demokrasya would be much, much better served by uh, eschewing yung ganyang mga uh, dynastic uh, styles mm-hmm. and uh, develop, cultivate, draw deeply and broadly sa capacities nating mga uh, Pilipino. Dahil hindi lang uh, iisang angkan o grupo uh, ang pwedeng uh, magsilbi sa ating bayan. I really appreciate yung mga uh, public mm-hmm. opinions expressed ni na SP uh, Soto at nung mm-hmm. iba't ibang mga legal luminaries natin na it is uh, uh, it would be uh, like a violation of the constitutional prohibition on uh, a president seeking a second term. No? So, wag na nating uh, uh wag nating tanggapin uh yung ganyang estilo. Palagay ko uh, kahit yung ilang mga taga-suporta ni presidente in their heart of a hearts, alam nilang that would do our country more harm than good. Mm-hmm. So, one way nga po to avoid this as you mentioned earlier is if the opposition can unite um uh, can unite. But uh yeah. isa nga po sa mga but uh, some people would say na Kunwari, when we want some bayan released its nominees po, di ba? So, sabi, why is um, Deputy Speaker Vilma Santos and Deputy Speaker um, uh, Villanueva uh, included there when they are a part of the administration? So, para mga are they are they really in the opposition? How do you how do we make sure po na parang the group the, the coalition so would should there be a coalition that we will create a truly for the kumbaga, uh, opposition, if we will call it that way. Well, we begin by expanding the definition na sino ba ang uh, possible coalition members. Kasi nga, gaya ng uh, nabanggit ko kanina, even now, uh, even since after the midterm election, um, medyo in-expand ko na beyond uh, our um, parameters kami sa opposition. Mm-hmm. Kumbaga, hindi na lang kami usual suspects. Pero mm-hmm. dahil the past half decade has been so uh, traumatic, nasundan pa nitong, na-overlay pa nitong pandemia and recession. So, mm-hmm. double, multiple traumas for our people. Palagay ko yung shared suffering na yun, uh, simula sa EJ case, uh, pambabasto sa ating mga babae, Christia, yung um, pagsisell out sa China, other democracy challenges, plus, plus itong pandemic and recession. Mm-hmm. 
palagay ko yung ganyang mga <clears throat> once in a lifetime na shared sufferings, na shared agonies, uh, could predispose us Filipinos, even across the political divides, or kahit sa mga kababayan natin na sasabihin walang politika or walang kulay, mm-hmm. to open our minds to working together kung meron tayong at least ma-identify na na common ground common goal forward mm-hmm. oo, with accountability uh, but with openness to learn from and try to work together with each other at the same time commitment pa rin sa kanikanyang long term visions na maaring magkakaiba but at least to create a better space kung saan pwedeng i-debate yung mga yon or i-work out alin yung mm-hmm. ideya na man- mananaig mm-hmm. and so therefore ako uh, nung nakita ko yung um, shortlist ng isang bayan, mm-hmm. ang baso ko dun sa mga pangalan ni na Deputy Speaker V, Deputy Speaker mm-hmm. Brother Eddie I, well, may mga, may mga common um, issues or mm-hmm. advocacies with each of them. Hindi pare-pareho lahat, but sino naman ang pare-parehong lahat ng advocacies? Kahit kami sa loob ng opposition, we may also have our different mm-hmm. opinion on certain issues. Pero, so naging naging bukas yung loob ko sa ganong inilabas na uh, shortlist ng isang bayan and like I mentioned also mm-hmm. earlier I'm hoping na yung ganyang prosesong public process na inilunsad nila along with earlier ones and I'm sure later ones in the year uh, the run up to the election sana ba- basta mag ano mag merge pa in a meaningful way na magkakaroon ng electoral weight and impact. Mm-hmm. Now, ma'am, when we talk about the elections, especially in these times, social media plays a very big part of the campaign. Um, mm. What do you make of dung, yung mga supposed troll farms na being organized, you know, to smear potential um, candidates against the administration? Mm-hmm. How can we address this and how can we, parang ano yung efforts na kailangan natin gawin to ensure na hindi na ito magsa-thrive? Kasi in 2016 and 2019 talagang, yes. there are, you know, um, yung mga nagko-comment on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, paano po natin i-address itong right. Well, for one, uh, na-appreciate ko talaga yung pag-highlight ulit ni Sen Ping mm-hmm. ng presence, uh, activities, at saka threat post ng ganitong mga troll farms. We've heard and known about them mm-hmm. since prior the 2016 campaign. And unfortunately, uh, in fact, parang nag-gain pa sila ng institutional support within the state and funding uh, in the years since until now. Uh, hindi nagkulang yung mga social media advocates to raise the, the warning uh, signals, the red flags uh, about this. Itong mga troll farms din ay subject mm-hmm. or protagonist sa ilang mga importante kaso ngayon sa ating mga korte. And even in our legislative work, we've had uh, occasion to talk not directly about the troll farms, pero for example, yung accountabilities ng mga social media companies themselves. Never to censor, kasi originally ang social media naman, parte ng ating democratic space, ba? Mm-hmm. Not to stray into the territory of censorship, pero yung accountability ng mga social media platforms, which they have been um, uh, stepping up to to greater or lesser degree in the recent mm-hmm. few years or many months, yung accountability nila to yung salain naman, yung material which mm-hmm. their platforms mm-hmm. give a platform to kung patently um, false, uh, maliciously destructive, or may obvious na civil or political objective na anti-democratic, may responsibilidad at sa teknolohiya lang nila, may kaparaanan sila to respond to um, subscribers' reports, to complaints mm-hmm. of their members or or followers, to to take action, to take down sites, uh, to issue warnings, um, etc. And more of this in a in a systematic fashion because the social media world is a huge ecosystem or ecosystem mm-hmm. of ecosystems more of that kind of systematic action has to be taken by insiders of the social media uh, technological world tapos tayo bilang netizens ganon din through our different uh, citizens uh, organizations and well uh, after this administration the state itself has to look at 
uh, meron bang mga policies, programs um, mm-hmm. on the legislative side, on the DICT side, for example, na dapat, uh, uh, dapat gawin. Mm-hmm. Now you mentioned Senator Laxon shedding light on this issue yeah. again. Um, he also mentioned that parang may advantage yung administration because they do have the capability to um, create, manage, and sustain th- these um, troll farms. Do you share the same view na talagang pagdating sa ganito, um, may advantage yung administration? And how can the opposition counter that? Um, uh, understatement. <laughs> yung sinabi ni Senfing. Talagang may advantage mm. uh, ang administration. And unfortunately, uh, hindi na hindi naging kimi ang administrasyon gamitin itong mga um, makinarya nila uh, at pamamaraan in various political contests uh, in the past uh, five years so what does the uh, not just the opposition need to do about it but what do civic minded netizens need to do uh, about it well kailangan uh, magparami ng mga netizens groups and them work together uh, to combat fake news, to combat disinformation. It's mm-hmm. easier said than done uh, because of the sheer uh, uh, bread, tapos volume capacity ng no mga troll farms, uh, yung malaking pera na naga undergird sa operations nila. Na, you know, uh, people working in the troll farms um, maybe could already make a living ka, dun lang sa sweldo nila, di ba? And sino ba naman ang, mag, uh, ang madadalian magbitaw ng mm-hmm. trabaho sa gitna ngayon ng pandemic recession, di ba? So, uh, napaka-sinikal na proposition o transac- transaction iyon. Unfortunately, it is definitely still ongoing. So, uh, ang magagawa ng mga civic-minded groups, both opposition and non-opposition, Siguro hindi talaga makakapantay, but uh, we have to make the effort to uh, clear the social media space of garbage, yung mga hindi naman totoong facts, posing as facts, to get the the communication out there na ano ba talaga ang mga sitwasyon ng ating mga kababayan mm-hmm. on the ground, ano ba talaga ang mga problema natin, ano ba talaga ang mga posibleng solusyon uh, dito sa pandemia, sa recession, sa sa iba pang mga issue na importante sa atin, even as we go to the polls and uh, outside the polls, sa pang araw-araw uh, na buhay, uh, and ang laki ng trabaho ang kailangan gawin ng opposition mm-hmm. plus plus uh, to catch up and to have a uh, space uh, for uh, our and many other different voices. Uh, out there. Mm, question lang, Senator mm-hmm. Risa, because uh, a resolution has been filed in the House mm-hmm. seeking to investigate this, especially when, well, at least if we're gonna base it on the information given by Senator Laxon, there is an undersecretary. This is a government of... mm. I don't think na may resolution pa, and if everyone mm-hmm. is filed, I, I would guess, well, it would be up to our majority leader at Rules Committee, but I would guess na it could go uh, either to the committees on public information or public information. the Blue Ribbon Committee itself. Depende mm-hmm. no, kung paano if a phrase nung uh, magpa-file. Pero in previous, uh, several, if I remember correctly, several previous hearings in the past few years, na bring up na rin ito. Uh, I remember at least one um, set of hearings uh, tungkol sa, sa fake news. I think it was in the public information. Mm-hmm. Si Grace naman. Uh, anang chair non and uh, SP, our Senate President, was also very active uh, in those hearings. Panimulang pagdinig lang iyon sa maraming komplikadong issue kaugnay ng galaw ng uh, troll farms. But at least uh, that served to bring the, in- the issues initially out into the public conversation. Kaya siguro nung mm-hmm. binanggit ulit ni Senting, may resonance talaga kasi uh, unresolved issue yan eh. Um, abiding concern talaga uh, sa publiko. Mm-hmm. Now, Senator, I just want to ask you because you're an advocate for LGBTQ um, yes. um, rights and um, there was, there, there were statements coming out from the community saying na 
um, their members will not vote for their politicians who, um, and I quote, are known to have homophobic, biphobic, and mm -hmm. um, transphobic views, as well as those who have ties to conservative groups that have discriminated mm -hmm. against the sector. Um, how important is their vote and how important is it for politicians who are seeking or are running for um, in 2022 to really genuinely care about those rights? Because in the legislature, talagang, even if 2021 now, there's still this con conservative pa rin po sila, especially yung so Even... Even sa Senate. <laughs> yeah, even even sa Senate. Health, mainit oh, na mainit na issue yung LGBTQ yeah. legislations. So okay. how how will that play in in the elections, yung vote ng community na yun? Especially well, I believe the votes of the LGBTQIA plus community will matter in the election kasi mamamayan din sila at botante din uh, sila. At kaming mga politiko, uh, at lalo na kaming mga aktivista, we do genuinely uh, have to care um, about their community and about their uh, advocacies. Nung spinonsor ko nga ulit, finally, yung Soji Equality Bill sa Senate, sabi ko nga, sana may this 18th Congress be the Congress that will mm -hmm. finally put this bill to a vote. Kasi naman, dalawang dekada lang naman nila <laughs> pinaglalaban ng bill ang community, tsaka kami mga allies. So, 20 years, hello, isang generasyon na yun. And, uh, so definitely, their vote will count. Their vote counts kasi lahat tayo ay uh, may ambag sa lipunan, no? Uh, if it needs saying, lahat ay pantay-pantay. Uh, the bill itself recognizes the fundamental right of every person, regardless of sex, gender, age, class, status, disability, religion, political belief. Uh, at sa kami urgency din at pa rin ang SOGI equality kasi hate crime mm -hmm. and harassment uh, still are perpetrated in our day and age and therefore are covered by the bill. So, nabagit ko kanina na na-sponsor ko siya ulit. So, um, nari-introduce ko siya December 2020 uh, after it was turned down many times to be brought out mm -hmm. on the floor. Uh, imagine, ah, yung, yung so, a SOGI equality bill, it wasn't even called that yet. Parang anti-discrim bill siya. Anti-discrim. Uh -huh. Oo, it was first filed in Congress. Uh, 11th Congress. So, seven Congresses ago. So, ibig sabihin nga, dalawang dekada na mula nung nagsimula yung laban kontra sa gender-based discrimination. At least in the halls of um, our Congress. Eh, sa simbahang katolika nga, eh, kung saan miyembro din ako at yung mga anak ko, si Pope Francis mismo has expressed support for LGBTQIA plus individuals at nagbigay din ng suporta o endorsement at least sa same-sex civil union. Mm -hmm. Oo. Oh, sabi niya, and I quote, you know, homosexual people have the right to be in a family. They're children of God and have a right to a family. Sinabi niya nung Oktubre lang. <laughs> In your, in, based on your assessment, Senator Risa, because as someone who's covering the House of Representatives, I yes. think the reception of the SOGI bill is a lot, not, I wouldn't say a lot lighter, but they are mm -hmm. more reactive uh, or they are more receptive mm -hmm. of, of the SOGI bill over there, especially right now that Speaker Velasco, I believe, is a supporter of this measure. So it, there is kumbaga, the, the more optimistic the possibility of a SOGI bill being passed in the House. I mean, the House already passed it before. Talaga lang yes, stuck sa the Senate in the SOGI yeah, bill. But sorry. how about, what, what do you think of the chances of SOGI bill in the Senate? Uh, we still have the third regular session. Is it, is it still possible? Well, I'm hoping at least mabuksan ulit yung period of interpolation. Dahil sa period na yon na, na beaten siya nung 17th Congress. Uh, hindi ko alam kung kakayaning maipasa into law, but that is always the hope. I will never stop fighting for it as an ally. At palagay ko, uh, basta mailabas namin sa floor every Congress, makausad siya kahit isang hakbang, no? from, say from period of interpolation, at least ngayong 18th Congress, kung madala hanggang period of amendment sa 19th Congress, mm -hmm. darating at darating din. <laughs> Yung panahon, darating din ang isang Congress ng ating Republika na maipapasa na siya 
uh, into law. Ang importante is kahit sa ganitong mga mahihirap na yugto, medyo maganit uh, ang reception uh, sa isang uh, house ng kongreso natin, the important thing is to keep it out in the public conversation, the public mind, the public imagination. Kasi, hello, ang LGBTQIA plus Filipinos, bahagi ng ating lipunan. They too uh, demand and deserve legislation that protects their rights, not in any special or new way, but as citizens and human beings na pareho at pantay lang sa bawat isa. Just to be candid about it, Senator yes. Risa, does it mean na uh, you are not hopeful based on your statement? Oh. Do you think that this is not the Congress that will pass for Jibin? I'm always hopeful. <laughs> Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina about the about politics. So, uh, I'm always hopeful kahit may mga sandali it, ngayong 18th Congress, may mga araw na naging hindi optimistic ako but always hopeful and willing to be surprised. <laughs> Ready to be surprised. Yeah, willing to be surprised. Sige, bring it on. <laughs> you recently filed uh, a resolution um, on the police, what you call like police brutality of Yes. Because many kids, many children, teenagers have been victimized by, you know, in operations they're killed. Um, yeah. Can you tell us more about this resolution and this um, proposed investigation? Sure. So, ito yung proposed Senate Resolution 776 on teen deaths. So, triggered again by the recent slay of minor John D. Maglinte mm-hmm. no, by law enforcement officer sa Binyan, Laguna. Uh, tapos yung iba pang mga killings ng minors sa mga tokhang or anti-illegal drug operations for two objectives para i-reevaluate yung rules of engagement ng Philippine National Police at i-evaluate din yung overall child rights compliance or record ng administrasyon particular sa konteksto ng war on drugs. So grabe eh, yung maglinte case, diba? sabi ng pamilya ni John na he was handcuffed and face down in the mud nung binaril siya. So, kontra dun sa ulat ng PNP Calabarzon mm-hmm. that John D. and his um, and Dalit, the other person with him, nakipagbarilan daw sa police nung sinaservan daw nila ng warrant of arrest si Dalit. And I hear the Dalit family also has a very different um, version of what actually happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, inamin din ni Chief PNP Eliazar uh, sa ABS-CBN Teleradio na may mga operational lapses uh, nung operation. At, you know, in fairness to him, nanawagan siya sa mga saksi to come forward, shed more light on the incident and its uh, attendant circumstances. So, following that, uh, ang sampung Laguna cops pinaplace ni Chief PNP sa restrictive custody at ngayon nandun sila sa Regional Police HQ. So, pending the results of their uh, fact-finding investigations. At tama ka, Ms. Christian, marami-rami na mga bata at kabataan. Um, so, mag- John, this is not the first case of a minor slain in the Philippine drug war. May pag-aaral itong World Organization Against Torture that uh, is at, at least 122 kids, pati isang one-year-old, and this, this number could be understated, but already 122 have been killed in anti-drug operations and vigilante-style killings mula noong 2016. And out of all these deaths, the 100 plus that are known, ha, bukod pa sa hindi recorded, out of all these deaths, isa lang yung kay Kian De Los Santos, ang 17-year-old, luckily captured on CCTV, yung terrible na pagpatay sa kanya, yung isang yun lamang has led to conviction. And even then, only of the direct perpetrators. Sabi further ng World Organization Against Torture sa study nila, those 122 deaths, yes, are likely an underestimate kasi madalas daw yung mga kamag-anak, binabantaan ng pulis, sinasabihan na huwag humingi ng tulong sa mga human rights groups. So aside from the action taken by Chief PNP, I really welcome also yung investigasyon na gagawin ng Commission on Human Rights. And you know, tayo sa Pilipinas, signatory tayo sa Convention on the Rights of the Child. Na doon, mm-hmm. yung section or article 37, ginagarantya na walang bata na masasubject sa torture o sa iba pang cruel, inhuman, and degrading punishment uh, or unlawful detention, let alone killing no, at the hands of state agents 
sa pagkundukta nila ng mga state-sponsored operation. So medyo uh, matibay ang pundasyong tinatayuan ng resolusyong ito. Just a final question, Senator. Actually, it's, it's very related to this. How big is the role, especially in relation to this case nga po, is, this is another drug operation, gun wrong, kumbaga. So, um, and they, we know about the ICC uh, yeah. seeking an investigation, and then there's this another investigation from the Commission on Human Rights. Just a final question, Senator Risa. How big is the role of state policies in this um, kumbaga, instances? Yeah, mayroon tayong mga probes na international organization seeking probe. What is the role? Because the administration will say that we are you know, we are persecuting the policemen involved in these cases. It's up to them. Sarili silang ano, operasyon. We have the guidelines and so on. But ano ba yung role ng state policy here uh, on a national scheme? The role of state policy in a national scheme is primary. It's paramount. Mm-hmm. Uh, ang Estado ang primary duty bearer. Kung sa panahon ng gera, uh, ang Estado yung pinaka-accountable for international humanitarian law violations. Pero may IHL accountabilities din ang non-state actors. In mm-hmm. these times na hindi uh, hindi international war uh, ang, ang nangyayari. But there's still uh, a, a leftover internal armed conflict. Tapos ito, naglunsad pa sila ng war on drugs. Yung paglunsad lang ng war on drugs na yan, ibig sabihin, sila ang originator ng gerang mm-hmm. yon. A war that has turned, a so-called war, that, you know, turning its back on, on the dapat na public health approach sa problematic drug use, that war on drugs has turned into a war against the poor. At ngayon, mm-hmm. nagiging war pa sa ating mga kabataan at mga bata. At ang accountability niyan lies most highly, squarely on the doorstep of the state, of the administration. Polisiya niya naglunsad, nag-unleash ng war on drugs na iyon. Kaya, ano eh, dito sa very welcome uh, finding ng prosecutor ng ICC requesting an investigation, eh talagang masasabi natin na the time of reckoning is fast approaching. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really coming. Yung application na yon, that application for full investigation brings us one step closer towards justice for all the victims of extrajudicial killings. Sinimula natin kay, para kay Kian, gawin din natin para kay John B. Gawin natin para sa bawat Pilipino na, na napatay at yung mga, mga pamilya nila na na uh, na ulila and i really mm-hmm. hope that you know in line with our commitments under international law na yung buong state apparatus na nanawagan ako sa kanila sa buong burokrasya uh, including the PNP as they are showing starting to show first steps dito sa kaso ni John D. so lalo na yung ating law enforcement units mag-cooperate no? pag nagbukas na yung uh, yung investigation stage mm-hmm. so if i understood it Correctly, Senator Risa, you believe that state policies allowed this to happen? Not only allowed, state policy instigated this instigated. war on drugs. State policy has paved the way for that gruesome campaign to unleash a wave of violence na mm-hmm. hindi pa nga natin nakikita yung ganitong magnitude eh, at yung ganitong klaseng mga pangaabuso na na-unleash uh, nabuksan ng state policy na iyo. Okay. Thank you so much. Again, that is Senator Risa Ondiveros. Ma'am, maraming salamat po for your time. Again, my name is Neil Arwin Mercado. Joining me is Chris Ramos and that has been your Inside Look.